In this video, we're going to use Can I Rank to kind of peek behind the curtain a little bit and start to understand why sites rank where they do and how your competitors have achieved their ranking. This is a really important skill to practice as an SEO because once you can look at a set of search engine results and in just a minute or two start to understand why each site ranks where it does, then you can figure out where the weaknesses are, why your site's not ranking, and what kinds of things you'll need to improve on your site if you want to become more competitive. So this will make you much, much more productive as an SEO. First example we're going to look at here is a page on the Arcteryx website targeting the keyword climbing harness. So we all know Arcteryx makes the best climbing harnesses. Why aren't they ranking for this keyword? The first thing we want to look at to understand that is the competitive analysis table. In this one I've used the improve my rankings tool, but you can also use the grow my content tool to get this same table. Up at the top we have the six major ranking factors, and you can compare your score in each of those areas to the competitors. This is really helpful because we can kind of see at a glance why each site ranks where it does. The interesting thing is that sites rank for different reasons. So if we look at the number one ranker right here on REI, we can see that they're mainly dominating because of their page strength. If we click on that, we see that they have 72,000 links going to this page. That's incredible for a catalog page, and obviously a super high Moz rank and page authority as well. So those are most likely quite quality links. That, along with their brand strength that they have here, represented in the website strength, really shows that it almost doesn't matter what they put on the page. Uh, they're clearly going to be a contender with a page that strong. On the other hand, some other sites like Backcountry right here, they're probably ranking because they did a great job targeting the keyword. Their page relevancy is the highest of any of these competitors. And if we take a look at their page, we can see why. So first we can look at how the page looks like to humans looks like a pretty normal catalog page. And that's actually almost indistinguishable with one of the ones like REI here. Both of them are just big lists of climbing harnesses. But Backcountry's done some really smart things here that REI hasn't, that the search engines notice, but humans don't. Uh, we have a tool to help you see that here with the view as search engine. If I do view as search engine for backcountry, we connect you to the service Browsio, where you can see basically behind the scenes what the raw code looks like, because that's what the search engines are reading as well. So looks like a pretty standard page at first. You've got your nice heading. You've got a lot of navigation links. Um, then you start to get in the product. Already here, we start to see a nice thing that they're doing. Here's a really prominent, bold heading that uh, matches the keyword. We start to get into the product listings and they see they've done some smart things here. They're using um, image alt text that includes the keyword. They've also made the link for every single product contain the keyword and they've made it an, an H3 or H4 heading tag so that it shows the search engines that that's a little bit more important. And every one of those, again, you just see everywhere, harness, climbing harness, harnesses, lots of keyword variations there, kid harness, so on and so on. Uh, but the best part, my favorite one, is that when you go all the way down to the bottom here, they actually do have some subtle text content, how to buy a climbing harness, um, broken down by different types of harnesses, sport, big wall, trad, mountaineering, and ice. And that really just shows the search engines that this is a little bit more thorough of a page for the topic climbing harnesses. That's the kind of thing that search engines really like, and even if it's not immediately obvious where that is on the page, that's right here, um, it does make a difference for the search engines. And um, that's a great example of designing both for search engines and people. That's ultimately what you want to do if you're going to be able to succeed in SEO. Let's take a look at one more example. The grid.io is a super innovative website builder. So surely these sites are going to be ranking for the keyword website builder, right? Well, first thing we notice is this is a huge keyword. It's worth about 8 million in traffic each year between both a really high search volume and a very, very high cost per click. Because obviously a lot of people who are searching for website builder are going to end up converting to uh, purchasing a website builder. So this is a keyword a lot of people want to rank for. When we look at the competitive analysis table, 
we see a really interesting pattern. What you'll notice here is the big brands, the guys that you would expect to be ranking, including the grid, uh, really not doing a very good job with their SEO and targeting this keyword. Um, they are primarily emphasizing marketing in their home pages and not keyword relevancy in SEO. And part of that is because they don't have to, because they're the big brands and they have this extraordinary website strength and page strength there, then they're probably going to rank for a lot of these terms, even without doing a good job targeting the keyword. But that also opens an opportunity for smaller sites. And so if you're a small business, then it's nice to know that the door is open for you to come in there and compete by doing a better job in some of the other areas. And that's indeed what some of the competitors have done here. We can look at, for example, WebsiteBuilder.com, one of the top ranking sites. Of course, these guys are benefiting from their domain name. It gives them this huge website relevancy. It gives them some great anchor text links that contain the exact keyword. Um, and they have a lot of those from external sites. And those are probably natural links because people naturally link using the uh, domain name. WebsiteBuilderInsider.com has done a similar sort of thing. They, um, first of all, have a ton of great related content on their website. So they have a 90 in website relevancy. And of course, they have links as well. These look a little more aggressive, a little less natural here. Um, that all of their top links conveniently match these valuable keywords. But um, right now, that's working for them. So um, that's enabling them to be a top competitor here with um, many, many fewer links than um, the big brands have. Here's another example. Uh, these guys not doing quite as good of a job with their page relevancy, but by being a little bit more aggressive with their links, they are managing to get up there as well. So again, these are both external and internal links that contain the keyword website builder or some variation thereof, like how to create a website, responsive website builder, and so on. Again, we can see that sites rank for different reasons. In general, it's some balance of the authority of the specific page and the website combined with how well you're targeting the keyword and how aggressively your link anchor text relates to the keyword. Ideally, you wanna try and balance all of those things. You don't wanna to go too overboard in any one area and um, that's going to help you rank in a safe and sustainable manner.